night on Bands Reunited. Go, go, go. They skyrocketed to stardom with classic songs that made them the darlings of alternative radio. But the band's rise to the top quickly lost momentum after a power struggle developed between band members John Easdale and Chris Carter. Too much politics going on at that end. Chris and I were always partners, and uh, I think I, I resented some of, uh, of having to share some of that credit. I think I have a recording of a, of a six-hour argument. Their feuding, coupled with drug addiction, shattered any hopes of Dramarama's survival. That was one of the nails in the coffin. There have been so many. I like to call it a, a succession of bummers. Piles of coke, guns, and dude, like, marital aids. I've got seven days to find the original members of Dramarama. I'm looking for a guy named Mark Engler. <laughs> Don't call him, though. Surprise him. Did you know that he was in a band? You know who he is? Yes. Have you seen Peter Wood? Right there. Does he come here all the time? Every night. I was looking for John Easdale. This, this is totally un uncool. Is he here now? No. And convince them to take part in a one night only special performance. Are you in? I'm not on talking terms with these guys. Like the guitar player from Drum Roll. Ah, oh, no, the 
said, I said, you're not it's not me. And I just like walked out. You're not bitter about it at all? You're not upset? Yeah, I haven't talked to Chris in a while. I thought Chris had a time out here. Did he do anything or say anything that got you ticked off? Like, what happened? Well, he kind of, he's the kind of guy that's called to quits and just out of leaving the band or whatever he was going to do. He went on K-Rock and, you know, I said, oh, we're breaking up. And he went, oh, wow, we're breaking up? Hmm. I guess I got to go take that job driving a bulldozer. <laughs> so, you know, just say, what happened, happened, you know, what are you going to do? And this is what it's come to. Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter, thanks for signing on. Thanks again. Looking thanks. forward to yeah, it. It's, uh, thanks for stopping down. Yeah, so we'll see you in uh, L.A. All righty, good enough. Thanks, buddy. Peter will trade his bulldozer for a six-string as he plugs into our reunion. Next, lead singer John Easdale gets the ambush treatment. This is totally un uncool. And the boys come clean on some old habits. There was a lot of pots of smoke. Oh, cocaine is a horrible drug. I didn't want to die that soon. And later, why did Dramarama break up? Depends on who you ask. It was a group decision. When he said the band's break up, I said, if you say so, Chris. Chris Carter hosts a radio show in Los Angeles. Our plan is to bum rush Carter while he's live on the radio so he'd be less likely to turn us down. I'm looking for KLSX. At least we hope so. You have an appointment? Okay, thanks. Come on, guys. Hey, you need an Let's appointment. Just make a for There's no one here. Hi, that's right. Totally 
un uncool. Ah, uh, you're gonna have to get me a couple of minutes with a shirt on. I, I don't have time. I'm trying to get your band back together again for a one night only gig. I don't have a shirt on. Oh, I'm totally expecting a phone call. Oh, oh, okay. So I'll be back. Okay. In just a moment. But okay. He went in to get a shirt. I'm with a show called Bands Reunited, and we are trying to get Drama Rama back together again for a one night only gig. Are you in? I don't know. I can't believe that, that this is taking place. Will you do it? Are you in? Uh, sure. Why not? That's yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. He's in. Welcome aboard. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. John Eastell is genius. Very sensitive. He's like a brother. And uh, it's universal, and, and that's why this has got a life of its own beyond the band. Peter told me that he heard on the radio that like Chris was on K Rock mm -hmm. saying, That's it, we're kind of done. Was that, do you remember that? Did oh, yeah, 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 I do. Uh, and again, I, I don't like to point fingers or whatever, but um, Chris did go on the radio and announce that he was leaving the band. He doesn't know what the rest of the band's going to do, but he's, he's moving on. It was a group decision, you know. Um, if John and I came to that decision, that may have been the case. I think Chris and John had a fight about something, and Chris, instead of leaving the band or whatever he was going to do, said, well, we'll just break up then. Chris had been so influential and, and so important in taking the band where it was. Some people think that he wrote half the songs. I wrote all the songs, and creatively, Chris and I were, were the, the core of the band. Chris had a lot to do with the visual elements, and, and I wrote the music in the songs, and, and so it was a matter of... It being my vehicle and everybody, come on, you can get in. Did that create a, uh, a personal conflict to the point where you guys couldn't maybe get along as well as you did when you started out? Pretty much, yeah. I was like, okay, bands, that's it. Bands over. Guy, bye, goodbye, guys. The substance abuse did kind of create some problems and create some issues. I started bringing that party lifestyle home, and, and I didn't want to do that anymore. I have all these little girls and things that are uh, that I got to take care of. I didn't want to die that soon and I didn't want to live that lifestyle much longer so I, I tried to uh, you know straighten up and fly right and I found it was easier to do without the rock and roll uh, situation surrounding you know and it sounds real pretentious to say life or death but it really was for me at that time I think I guess I was really selfish and I was way more thinking about my family than about my friends and my band you know I was like you know what you guys go do what you guys gotta do and I, I'm gonna go do what I gotta do did you miss uh, what you left behind? It's only in the years since I left that behind that I rediscovered the joy of, of making music. That's awesome. So you're looking forward to this reunion? Should be interesting. All right. We haven't all sat down and even looked at each other at the same time, much less uh, played any music. Frontman and father of four, John Easdale is ready to rock and roll and reunite. Next, drummer Jesse Bartman runs away from rock far, far away. It's just time to go. So Jesse probably, you know, is living on a mountaintop somewhere. Man, I want to do my own music. I want to be in India. And then, Chris and John put the drama in Drama Rama. John just said one day, you know what? I'm just tired of this. I think I wanted to just get away from that and, and prove to myself that I could do stuff on my own. Our quest to reunite the original members of Drama Rama continues as we hunt down guitarist Mark Engler in Southern California. Well, we'll go talk to the security guards right. and try and calm them down. In the meantime, you guys continue right. the pursuit. Yeah. Mark traded in the tour bus for a cubicle and is currently working in the insurance business as a claims adjuster. Hopefully, he'll adjust to the idea of reuniting with his old band. I was looking for uh, Mark Engler. Did you know that he was in a band? Mark was? Do you know Mark? Amir is here to see Mark, but don't tell Mark that we're here. It's a little okay. fun surprise. All right. Yeah. Hi, Mark Engler? That's me. Hi, I'm Amir from VH1. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good, how are nice you? Nice to meet you. Just had a quick question for you. You were in the band Drama Rama, right? Yes. When was the last time you were together with the band, with the original members of the band in the same room? 85, 84, something like that. Wow. If I got you guys back together again, would you be open to a reunion? You have to check my work schedule. Yeah, I think I can do something. Right. 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 He's in. That's awesome. Thank you very much. It's not every day you get a VH1 uh, crew coming in. That's awesome. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Thank you, Mark. There's nothing more to Mark, love him like a brother. 
He's a great guitar player, and uh, we, me and him play John songs better than anybody. How, how did you get into insurance, by the way? I had friends that were um, just as talented as I was, and but they were doing insurance, and they're like, this is great, because at the end of the day, you can go home. Right. When, uh, when it came time to breaking up, was there something that led to that? Was there a decision? Because That was John and Chris, yeah. pretty much. I think it was just unanimous. I think everybody felt the same thing at the same time. John and Chris were always the kind of the leaders slash visionaries. I think when you're a leader, you tend to want to be a leader and, and not so much share the power, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Chris is a really good debater, and debating is a really important you know, skill to have within this band. Really? <laughs> Why do you say that? Oh, God. Both Chris and John would come up with angles that, you know, certain things that they would say that, that you couldn't counter because they were very sharp and they were very direct, you know? John just said one day, you know what? I'm just tired of this. I think I wanted to just get away from that and, and prove to myself that I could do stuff on my own. Did John um, going into rehab, did that have anything to do with some of the problems? Oh, cocaine is a horrible drug. Whenever you bring something like that into the equation, um, it doesn't help anything. Were you surprised when you checked in to rehab? No. I saw a lot of good friends go down because of the whole cocaine thing. You know, you just don't need to do that stuff after a while. What was your take on Peter's reaction to the breakup? How did? How do you think he took it? I don't think he was very happy, to be honest with you. Really? Why? Peter might have heard it, but he didn't hear it. I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, Chris was on the radio after the fact, kind of saying that. But I, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I think stuff like that was partially out of spite, you know. <laughs> do you think he was ticked off that John made that decision? Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe it's like, well, you announce it, so I'm gonna announce it first. Oh, I got you. I can only be Beetle Paul, not you. <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks very much for spending some time. Thank you. We don't need insurance. Mark swears he's coming to the reunion. And whatever became of drummer Jesse Farbman? Jesse left. Um kind of go find himself. He was getting really interested in, like, you know, um, Indian culture, and I know he went to India, and uh, he was eating a lot of figs when I last saw him, and, you know, so Jesse probably, you know, is living on a mountaintop somewhere. He left the band before the band was, was finished. Um, like, it was like a week before we were going on tour, and he's like, I can't make it, guys, sorry. And he kind of got this whole Indian thing going, and maybe we could get some incense going, some meditation there. He's a world beat recording artist, Anand Jesse. We enticed elusive drummer Jesse Farbman back to Los Angeles under the pretense of an interview about life after rock and roll. Little did he suspect our master plan of staging a drama rama reunion. All right, here it is, the moment of truth. Jesse? Hey, hey, hey. I'm Amr from VH1. How are you? How was the flight? Smooth, huh? Jesse, thanks for uh, for coming all this way. Now, I know you're here uh, to do what you thought was an interview for VH1 about Drama Rama. Is that what you're here for? That's what I thought I was going to do. Slight change of plans. I work for a show called Bands Reunited. I was wondering if you would be interested in a reunion uh, with your drama rama bandmates, are you in? Totally. Cool. That's awesome. Wow. Welcome aboard. That's awesome. So, what was that like for you to be with a band? You know, like you know, in the studio and then ultimately, you know, on the road with them. Oh, it was very exciting. It was very exciting. You know, we were, we made a record. We went to we went to Europe and we toured and. Uh, and then we came out here, and uh, our record had already been played on Kara quite a bit, so we came out to a strong response, and pinch me, we were dreaming, yeah. You know, performing, playing, and then getting, hopefully, things handed to you, you know, as a lot of people do, you know, in, in that position. We did, we did get a lot handed to us in yeah. those early days, yeah. Like what? Something, something on the edge of our credit cards, perhaps. There was a lot of... Uh, there was a lot of pots of smoke and a lot of coke to sniff in those days. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you left at a certain point, right? Like, the band yeah. still carried on after you left. You know, every band has its dynamics, and we certainly had ours. Did it stop being fun for you? Is that what happened? It was just time to go, man. I went to do my own music. I went to be in India. It was just time to go. Tell me about 
your life pursuit as a musician? I have a CD out called Mantra, and I play um, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern and uh, Indian percussion. Have you totally left your rock and roll roots behind, though? Because I'm going to ask if you guys could perform for a one-night-only gig. Um, I'm easy. Sound like a plan? Sure. Sounds fun. Awesome. Well, Jesse, thank you very much. All right. Pleasure. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you at the reunion and back on stage at the Rocks. Fair enough. Can't wait. Cool. Year-round yogi Jesse Farbman will bring some zen to the Drama Rama Den. Next. Say wait a second. Reunited, but it might not feel so good. I, I hope, you know, everyone's le letting bygones be bygones. You could drive a bulldozer with me, Chris. Sounds enticing. And Jesse makes a confession. I feel somehow legally responsible at this point to say I have no idea if I can even operate a drum set. So really, last time you sat down with sticks and played a full kit was... And when you said you had to play the drums in like 12 years, I was like... <laughs> somehow we've managed to get all five members of Drama Rama to come together again. Let's just hope their differences don't stand in the way of a successful reunion. Peter Wood, look at you. You're all tied up now, huh? You traded in your bulldozer for a town car. Huh? Yeah, just for today. Yeah? Yeah, tomorrow back in the bulldozer. I can't believe we're doing this all over again. And uh, it was just, it's just a crazy, like I said, my head's spinning. And I just can't believe that we're actually going to play again together. So it's, it's just one of those things that we're going to have to take it one step at a time. The person I'm looking most for would be Pete. No, I miss Pete. A lot. I haven't spoken to Chris in a while, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens. We'll grab each other by the throat and start rolling around on the ground or something like that. We were like best friends, you know, for a while, and then we just kind of just said, that's it. <laughs> you know, I don't need to talk to him anymore, and he's keeping track of himself, so he's fine. There you are. What's happening, Pete? Not much, but what's happening Good to you? Good to see you. You too. What's new? This is new. This is it. Oh, this is too, too late. So the Roxy, huh? Yeah. What are we gonna do? That's what they tell me. What are we gonna do? Well, I just, I haven't seen him. Or really, we haven't spoken in a long time. How's your wife and kids? Good, good, good. Everybody's fine and dandy. So you're living uh, next door to your old house? My grandmother lived next door. Uh -huh. and we bought that house and bulldozed so you, okay, over. Okay, so you took down Granny's built house. A new, built a new one, yeah. Right. A new house there. No, that's good to be home. Your mother must hate you. because Oh my God. Out. She'll never forgive you for that, Chris, I'm telling you. It's killing her. I can't help it, you know? I mean, <laughs> it's like either we earn money or we move to Wayne. It's, it's one or the other. You could drive a bulldozer with me, Chris. <sighs> we got a spot in that other machine. <laughs> <laughs> the loader. Yeah. Hey, Mark. What the hell's going on? I think when I walk into that room, I'm always a little bit nervous, kind of like I am now. But once I get in there I, and it's all starting back up again, I believe it's going to be a great thing. Say, wait a second. Peter Wood, Chris Carter. There is no regrets ever to saying yes to a drama rama reunion. When I'm in my 70s, I hope to be saying yes to these things. I actually have one of these in my bathroom. It was the scarf era. Did you notice, though? Too black too white, and then our leader. I'm not worried about what we're going to do uh, musically, but just, uh, you know, even getting in the room together with everybody. We haven't all sat down and even looked at each other at the same time, much less uh, played any music. Johnny's down. Today, it's 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 all about uh, trying to, to remember, am I ready to, uh, to practice, play some rock and roll? <laughs> That's really all I'm thinking about, you know?
sticks and played a full kit was 12 years? Yeah. Interesting. We say I played the drums up like 12 years. I was like, hmm. <laughs> I haven't played drum set for a long time, and the music that I'm doing now is quite different than, than drum around the music. So, we'll let's keep our fingers crossed. We're gonna grab a bite to eat. You, you grab this. Back. We'll be right back. <laughs> This is like we have to do this 
pretty good. It's time for New Jersey's finest to reclaim the Sunset Strip. Ladies and gentlemen, Drama Rama!
see. Crew coming in, 